Welcome to Lesson 23 of Daily Theology. Today we're continuing with the doctrine of the Holy Spirit by talking about His work. While the Father, Son, and Spirit are always working together, the work they each do is distinct. Think of them as harmoniously singing different parts or notes of the same song. We learn this from a passage like Galatians 4, which addresses each person's role in the adoption of believers into the family of God, and it ends by saying, And because you were sons, God has sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts. So what part does the Holy Spirit sing? What work or works does He do? To begin with, we see the Spirit associated with the speaking of God's Word. In Numbers 11, when the spirit that Moses had was given to the 70 elders, they prophesied. Numbers 24 says the spirit came upon Balaam, and he not only prophesied, but also spoke a blessing from God on Israel. In Luke 1, when Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, she pronounced a blessing from God on Mary. Her husband, Zechariah, prophesied as the result of the Holy Spirit acting upon him. And in Luke 2, the Holy Spirit came on Simeon, moving him to bless or to praise the Lord. The process through which we got the Bible worked in much the same way. In this case, the Holy Spirit is associated with the writing rather than the speaking of God's Word. 2 Timothy 3.16 tells us Scripture was inspired, and 2 Peter 1.20 and 21 tells us exactly how that took place. It says no prophecy of Scripture comes from someone's own interpretation, for no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man. But men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. The Nicene Creed says the Holy Spirit spoke by the prophets, which refers to the human authors of the Bible. A second area in which the Spirit works is redemption, or what maybe you refer to as salvation. This makes sense because just as He was involved in the creation, the Holy Spirit is involved in the recreation of all those who were saved. In John chapter 3, Jesus spoke to Nicodemus about the Spirit's role in the new birth, which is the miracle of regeneration and is a necessity to enter the kingdom of heaven. According to Jesus in John 16, the Holy Spirit convicts us of sin and righteousness and judgment. 1 Corinthians 12, 3 says, No one can say Jesus is Lord except in the Holy Spirit. In justification or the initial moment of salvation, the Holy Spirit places us in Christ, applying His work to us as we repent and believe on Him. 1 Corinthians 6.11 says, You were washed, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. 1 Corinthians 12 teaches us that Christ baptizes us with His Spirit, which means that the Holy Spirit is given to live in us. And in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 2, it teaches that the Spirit of God is the power of our sanctification, meaning our growth in obedience, our growth in Christ's likeness. According to Galatians 5, he's the one who produces good godly fruit. He's the person of the Trinity according to 1 Corinthians 2 who illuminates the truth of God's word so that by it we are made holy. Romans 8 says he helps us to pray. Salvation is secure at least in part because the Spirit, according to Ephesians 1.14, seals us in it, his presence being the guarantee of it. He preserves us and enables us to persevere. Many passages, including some I've recently preached from in 1 John, teach us that he gives us assurance that indeed we belong to God. And from this assurance, we relate to God as our Father. Eventually, the Spirit will be involved in our glorification, raising the bodies of believers according to Romans 8.11 and finishing the work that he started by conforming us to the image of the Son. Now, in addition to his work in individual Christians, the Holy Spirit also works among all of the redeemed, the church, giving us unity according to Ephesians 4.3 and leaders according to Acts 20.28 and 
spiritual gifts according to 1 Corinthians chapters 12 through 14, and the power to witness according to Jesus in Acts chapter 1. Though the work of the Holy Spirit is different than that of the Father and the Son, it's no less vital, and it's never disconnected from what the other two persons of the Trinity are doing. The great church father, Augustine, put it like this. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as they are indivisible, so work indivisibly.